It's a, the only way to sum it up. You're no good, heartbreaker. You're lying and you're cheap. And I don't know why I let you do these things to me. Oh, my friends keep telling me that you ain't no good. But oh, oh they'll know. I should leave you if I could. Uh, I guess I'm uptight. Anyway, good morning, good afternoon. Y'all get the picture. Y'all get the picture. This is the most evilest, evilest person that's finally had his karma directed to him from what he put out. And I'm talking about none other than Michael Nowak, the follower of Dr. York and the Nuwabians. Um, and basically, him and his Adams family, na 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 na, sweet, na 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 na, petite, na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na, the freaks, they're spooky and Listen, that whole family, that whole get up, I never really followed Brother Polite, but I would see him back in the day, back in the day, maybe 10, 15 years ago. And what I noticed was that I, I, I just didn't, I knew it was something fishy about them when they were promoting the black woman as God, and he had four wives at that. He wasn't, he wasn't a big pimp back then. But I could see some shakiness going on when they moved to Hollywood and when they got some other entities on their back and I'm Yannette looking crazy because I hear she's the daughter of allegedly Dr. York. But I'm not going to waste y'all time with that type of information. I'm just glad that he was caught. I'm glad that he's paying the price for molesting a 14-year-old girl. And if any of y'all still think it's a damn joke and a game, and this is not a filthy piece of sh trash, then I feel sorry for your children if you have it. And uh, hopefully God will never bless you to have any at all because you already off the chain. Listen to this. Um, is well, you don't want to give your name, so at this point, just go ahead and you can give us a an impact statement. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Michael Nowak. This is the first time I have spoken publicly about what you've done to my daughter and I. I have gracefully remained silent the last two and a half years. Two and a half years of pain, shock, disbelief, PTSD, constant nightmares, and daily triggers. Trying to help my daughter heal when I'm not even healed myself. What you have done to my daughter, myself, and my entire family was inexcusable. You hurt us all. You made me believe that you were such a great man and you could do no wrong. You made me fully trust you and for that my daughter trusted you too. But the truth is, you're a monster. A demon. The very first time that I allowed you to be alone with my daughter. The very first time you couldn't even help yourself. He told me he was going to be right back. We're going downstairs. We're going to grab food and take vacation pictures. He told me that you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with her about loving and respecting me as a great mother that I was in and I actually believed you. 
I believe that you were going to bring her right back. I thought you were going to have this trusting conversation with her that you promised me. Her and I both trusted you. For a grown man to violate a child who trusted him, you should be ashamed of yourself. You plotted on me and my little girl. The entire time you knew what you planned to do. Isolate, intoxicate, then violate my baby. Shame on you. I trusted you to bring her right back. You were supposed to bring her back the same way that you took her. Instead, you drugged her and took advantage of her. You sexually abused her. You forced alcohol down her throat. You then forced her to see things that no child should ever have to see. You forced her to feel things that no child should have to feel. You forced her to accept violence that no child should ever have to endure. You forced drugs in her that no human should ever even ingest. She's my child. My baby, how could you? How could you? You could have killed her with all the drugs that were found in her system. And you thought your master plan was mapped out perfectly, huh? You thought I'd be dumb enough to believe you over my child. And you thought that money would blind me. You thought I was going to be so blinded that I wouldn't notice when you returned her with bruises all over her body and her mouth busted, uncontrollably shaking. Absolutely not. And although you executed your plan, and you got what you wanted those couple of hours, you actually failed. Because look where you're at right now. You have created a lifetime of trauma for my daughter and I. Before you, we never knew evil existed. You brought so much evil into our lives that early morning. And I'll never forget. I called you like 50 times and you wouldn't answer me. And I called her too, but you took her phone. <laughs> You drove my baby and you gave her no way to seek help. You left me no way to contact her or even know where she was. I get physically sick now whenever I'm away from my daughter because of you. Something as simple as her going to school. I'm in panic mode. Because I'm scared when she comes back, she's going to be hurt all over again. I constantly have flashbacks of that night. And what she lives with is, is, is not okay. She feels uncomfortable around people and will live with this forever. And this is not fair to her. She never deserved this. Shame on you for forcing evil on our youth. And you know, for a year, I questioned, how could you even do this to us? Her and I did nothing wrong to you. We trusted you. I moved across the country because I believed everything that you told me. But it was pure manipulation I see now. All you do is specialize in selling false dreams. How could you do this to an innocent child or mother who simply trusted you? We did nothing wrong. But you know what? I'm done breaking my head trying to question or figure out how you could do such a thing. It's so simple to me now. You're just a sick man. A man who have, you can have a plethora of women, but you secretly prefer to have a child. And it's so clear now, I will never be able to fully trust another person doing the betrayal that you've shown me. And for that, I was not willing to trust six strangers and go to trial. Nor was I going to put my daughter through an additional trauma. This plea was in our best interest. You and I both know the evidence is extremely substantial. But even with that, I refuse to have my child be tormented when she's done nothing wrong. All she holds is the truth. And I will say this. Although you were so worried about being labeled a sex offender, you did us a huge favor by admitting to guilt, period. So for that, I thank you. I truly thank you. Yes, mitigation took place and I allowed it as long as it meant you going to prison and you getting true help. Because true help means no more victims. The fact that your only non-negotiable was to accept the sex crime shows exactly the type of man that you are. You know what you did in that hotel room. I know what you did. And my daughter knows what you did. 
DNA doesn't lie. There's no reason why your DNA should have been found on my baby. And yes, I satisfied your bogus request to not be labeled a sex offender, but it doesn't take away from who you truly are. I wasn't going to waste any time going back and forth with you over a label. God will judge you for exactly the person he knows you to be, a sexual predator. So rest assured, jail time equals jail time. And I pray that during your 10 years of sex offender probation, you actually receive the treatment that you need and it helps heal your sick mind and get the thoughts of being with children out of it. All you care about is your pretend image that I know exactly who you are now. You want to be this public figure, but you want to do all your evil acts in secret. You're so self-centered. That's why the last time I saw you on February 27, 2021, you fought me. You try to hold me hostage from taking my daughter to the hospital. I'll never forget that cowardly look in your eyes. I'll never forget it. You were so scared. You were so scared because you realized you messed with the wrong one. Your last words to me. You held me and said, please don't go. You're going to ruin my career. Well, today, September 6, 2023, my last words to you are, I hope the next 17 years of your life you're reminded of the disgusting, terrifying, unforgettable act that you've done to my innocent daughter. Shame on you. And although you've caused a tremendous amount of trauma for myself and my daughter, we will, and I'll always, will always be superior of you because a successful, honest career is something that you can never, ever have. We will both continue to stand, stand against violence. My daughter will continue to persevere and, and be bright and intelligent and courageous young woman that she is. So Michael Nowak, I hope you enjoy prison and God bless you. Wait, thank you, man. Uh, thank you for your courage for speaking. It is heartbreaking and my heart goes out to you and your daughter. All right, the defendant will be remanded in the Department of Corrections. I want to thank uh, Brother Tahar Bay actually for um, for uh, uploading the actual court proceeding, and that way you can hear it a victim statement from the victim's mouth, which is one of the hardest things to do. Um, I wrote mine and had to have mine wrote. Uh, read by somebody. I mean, those things are hard. And when they come from the heart, you got you make sure you don't miss anything. And I think she was very thorough. But let me thank Brother Taharka Bay, and that is uh, from Morris World TV, for allowing me to um, just to to uh, share that because y'all needed to hear because there's a lot of people that make excuses for him. And others that are supremely narcissistic, insane, and but they know how to finesse a dollar out of you. Um, so, first of all, I want to commend her for sticking up for her daughter. I, I feel bad in one sense. And that is, um, Brother Polite is a, of a brilliant man. But if you think about uh, when going back to where you came from, I think when he busted out of the scene, off the scene, he was already in prison. Okay? He had a chance to do a lot of reading. This was back in the day when Amunet first picked him up. Okay? They didn't before they had any kids, before any a, a child, before any of this. What's the little girl's name? She's not little no more. Like I said, ten years ago, um, I I listened to polite and I was impressed with his knowledge about certain things. But then he started going off on the rail, having all uh, saying that you know. Uh, um, you know, he could have four and five and six wives. I was like, okay, this seems like some, um, not because 
it was a polygamous relationship. But because the energy, they all look like, uh, they look. Let's just keep it real. They look like prostitutes. So I start going, this dude. Oh, I ain't born yesterday. He might be pimping these hoes. That just might be what he do. And that's what it looked like. And so I had already come to that conclusion, no matter how much knowledge it had, he had. And then the situation just started getting worse and worse and worse. From the time that he faked and called the police when he was in Hollywood. Because um, they probably arrested him because he looked like a pimp. And he had some girls out there. And Sonetta, I'm not letting him off the hook because all those people that came and out of that house of consciousness, and I'm going to say all, but Sonetta knew exactly what Polite was. And, and they're both agent provocateur, like Tariq Nasheed. And if y'all don't understand the detriment that they can do to our community and people in it, then you're silly and you haven't learned from the past. This is almost like Jim Jones. Jim Jones, well, you know, but he was a white man. He had the ability to lead all, all those black people to their depths. These personalities, y'all have to watch them. Because if you are a sheep, then they're going to suck you in. And you're going to be talking about how powerful somebody is. And you're going to be, and it's okay. But when they, when you start looking at their character and it look messed up and they sneaky and they steam, you know, they stealing. Like um, before he had the whirlwind, it, then he trying to sell you containers. Then he trying to uh, uh, sell you sovereignty. Then he trying to sell you. Now you're like, this dude is a charlatan. He's a snake oil salesman. And until black people understand that, um, you know, I'm waiting. It'll be a next one. It'll be a next one. I'm glad the young lady um, seen her after her daughter because this whole um, Dr. York thing and the fact that his student is in jail now for the same thing that his teacher was in is just You know, it's, it's just insane. I feel bad for the girl now. Little girl, I mean, she might be the same age as the girl he tried to molest. I mean, what is her name? Tet Sunet, oh, one of her, his only daughter, looked just like him. Sunet, Sunet, the embarrassment that you caused on your family, dude. That you'd like to molest children and with all those women around you. Then you like to flash for all these insecure people. And you got to take all that knowledge and that's what you did with it. Well, it's all over now. At least for seven years. Um, at least your father got life in prison. Your father is never getting out. I think he got life plus 135 because of all the children he molested. And that's just something that, that there's a connected, there's a tie that bind y'all asses. Yeah. Your DNA had no business being found on the girl. And then you gave her drugs? Listen, I want to know what y'all think because you know, I, I don't want to, uh, I can talk a little bit more raw on Patreon, so I'm just going to leave it as this. And let me know what y'all think about this. That, uh, brother Polite. Uh, Michael Nowak. Who's now a jailbird. He's going, he went back to where he came from. The jailhouse. And he's going to come up with another scheme. And then your kids will be listening to him. Take them and sucker them out of their money. And out of their bodies. And y'all think it's okay as long as he got a bag. Y'all just, I'm glad he, he's where he belongs. And with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. I'm just getting appalled just the more I think about it. So 
I'm just going to get off. 